It'll be very interesting because as these Arab monarchies try to band together in the GC, in an expanded Gulf Cooperation Council, the question is going to be, when the king of Saudi Arabia sits down with, across the table and says to his counterpart in Morocco and says, you know, one of the prices to have our support is to not set us up for uh, reforms that we're not, we ourselves are not prepared to implement. Well, that's the question I wanted to ask Good you. Good segue. You know, exactly, <laughs> because, uh, you know, we have the invitation from the Gulf Cooperation Council to both Morocco and Jordan. Uh, where do you think that's going? Uh, do you think, you know, d d does Morocco belong there? Uh, what, what, is, what are the trade-offs? What, what will they have to give up? Uh, yeah, what would a they lot gain? Of, these are all very interesting. I've asked, I asked the Moroccans myself, mm -hmm. do they want to become members in the, of the GCC? And they say, why not? Well, I think you know, it's almost akin to what, uh, how Ireland viewed being, uh, becoming a member of the European Union. I suspect that they see this as a great economic boom without a great deal of, shall we say, obligation. Mm -hmm. And I think that the, obviously the Saudis have their own political reasons to want to expand this into what I call the League of, of Arab Monarchies uh, and, and to have Morocco and Jordan join in. But I think from Morocco's perspective, uh, look, the relationship between the royal families has been very close. Mm -hmm. Saudis vacation uh, in Morocco all the time. The royal families and the among the GCC members uh, and the and the monarchy in Morocco have been extreme. I think they're closer than they are in Jordan than they are in mm. Jordan, and so there's this as as far as this distance is, I probably have met more ruling leaders from the Gulf in Morocco than I would have if I'd gone to the Gulf mm -hmm. over the years. Well, what are the benefits of membership? Well, that's a very good question because I don't think it's so much, I don't think that's ever been laid out or has been laid out. If, the, if it is, it's been secret discussions because the fact is, is that a, a member of the GCC, whether it's Bahrain or it's the Emirates or Kuwait or Saudi Arabia, it's a, co -op, it's a defense cooperation initiative. I suspect that this has much more to do with Iran and a divergence of interest for the United States and Saudi Arabia than it has to do with Morocco or Jordan. I think this is a real effort by Saudi Arabia to create a new center of gravity of foreign policy in the Middle East. Do you think it would constrain uh, Morocco with respect to the reforms it's implementing? Uh, would they feel constrained, you know, because Saudi Arabia isn't as pro-reform and uh, would that be a, you know, a a requirement. Let me, let me, I think that's probably one of the most fascinating questions that one can ask in all of this. In their private talks, uh, will the king or his advisors, and whoever, by the way, will, will uh, replace this king when he passes on, is that king going to turn around to the king of Morocco and say, um, if you want the billions and billions of dollars from us, then uh, these reforms constitute the type of example that it's not beneficial. And, and yet, I suspect that the train has left the station. Uh, the Saudis are no fools either. They can't possibly call on the king uh, to maintain the respect and admiration of his people if he re reverse course. Uh, and that the very idea of the Saudis asking the king to slow down these reforms could not only backfire, but in effect backfire so badly as to very undermine the very 